Uh, my name is Dan Petrisco. I'm from the University of Washington. Uh, I'm going to talk about Flyfair. We're announcing our new uh, Agile open source Risk V multi-core. Uh, and we're designing it as a host uh, core for accelerator-based SOCs. This work is done between Washington and uh, Boston University. So the kind of motivation here is that traditional hardware design methodologies usually rely on proprietary tooling and proprietary IP libraries that don't promote reuse and uh, you know, are not accessible to hobbyists or researchers. So, and, but uh, at the same time, new open source CAD tools and open source libraries are pro providing a way for hobbyists and researchers to get involved in this ecosystem. But it's no coincidence that this is happening in an era where diverse workloads require custom silicon. Accelerators allow us to continue getting these performance gains while traditional transistor scaling is kind of petered out. But while custom accelerators are uh, the secret sauce for these new systems, they don't stand alone. You need all sorts of components like the Uncore, I.O., uh, chip testing capabilities in order to you know, maintain your own infrastructure just to develop a small accelerator uh, to do a specific uh, function task. And getting any of these components wrong can completely destroy all of your accelerator gains. So general purpose host cores are needed to coordinate all of these uh, accelerators, all these moving parts, all these uncore systems. Um, but when you're adding a new host core to the system, there are several considerations. You want it to be efficient, performant, and reliable. It needs to be able to do what you want in your power and performance envelope. It needs to be able to control a diverse set of accelerators, uh, both with standard and custom interfaces. It needs to be trustable. It needs to use standard design principles, standard design methodologies, standard design languages, so that people can just look at it, inspect it, and know that it's quality. Uh, and the IP needs to be extensively verified. Uh, if you have to do this redesign, re-verification, you've lost all your benefits of reuse. And last, it needs to be free and open source. You need to be able to play around with this and understand if it will fit into your system without purchasing a license or signing restrictive NDAs. So you end up just being able to click in an accelerator. This is the ideal case. So in order to fit this niche, we developed Flyfair. We call it a base class for accelerated SOCs because we envision people taking the code, extending it to their own circumstances, and then contributing back so that other people can reuse it. Uh, we've designed the architecture to be flexible enough to allow for this extensibility, and we've released the code under a permissive BSD license. But we don't want Blackcard to be the best core on the market. That's not our goal. Our highest performance core, rather. We want Blackcard to be small, efficient, and obtrusive. We want it to be able to go in as many systems as possible without dominating the performance or area, um, restricted performance or dominating the area. So on our route to you know, going global, we measure our progress around four distinct axes. We have quality, will people trust the code? Will people be able to uh, you know, justify putting into silicon? Will people be able to use it everywhere? Will it fit into all use cases and be able to use all accelerators with it? Does Blackparrot have everything that you need? Can it do all the general purpose code and host all the kind of accelerators that you want? And just as importantly, does it have a minimal set of features? Unused functionality in silicon takes up power and area, and most importantly, it adds complexity, which increases verification costs. And lastly, is it efficient? Is it, does it do what you want in the power performance envelope that you need? So this is kind of the design principles that we've come up with for Black Parrot. Uh, when we try to add a new feature, we consider these three factors. We try to be tiny. We want to have a small code base and small uh, design so that it will fit as many places as possible, and also so that people can wrap their head around the code, be able to go into the code base and be able to find issues uh, without having you know, this kind of overwhelming part of the uh, this overwhelming code base. We try to reuse open source libraries like Basejump SDL, Google Risk V DB, Berkeley Cardflow, things that are well verified and well documented so that people can come in with their own experience and be familiar with the library code base. We also want to be modular. We want people to be able to modify only a small part of the code and be able to make their own changes without having to uh, verify other parts of the system, have these cascading effects that are extremely difficult to debug. And lastly, we want to be friendly. This kind of means, you know, as engineers, we want to reinvent the wheel all the time because it's super fun. But it makes more sense to reuse libraries that exist, reuse code, and you know, avoid non-inventive syndrome as much as possible. 
So that's kind of setting up the stage of why we developed Flatcar and what our design goals and methodology are. Now we'll talk about the system architecture. Uh, kind of this uncore component that makes it really easy to integrate accelerators into our system. And I want to note, we're not trying to develop an SOC generator. Uh, our role here is more to provide a reference SOC methodology and a bunch of building blocks that people can use to plug in their own accelerators into BlackCard's SOC or integrate BlackCard SOC components into their own system. So in our system, BlackCard comprises its three knots. Uh, there's what we call the bedrock network for managing coherence transactions, the I.O. network, which manages off-shift communication, and the memory network, which manages DRAM communication. These are all connected via wormhole routers, which are small, efficient, and uh, fairly easy to verify. And we use regularized tiles to make sure that it fits into a normal hierarchical pad flow. So I mentioned bedrock. Uh, this is our fully cache coherent multi-core infrastructure, which allows traditional messy type coherence uh, using a novel protocol. This protocol de uh, develops, sorry, divides the system into two components, local cache engines, or LCEs, and uh, uh, cache coherence engines, or CCEs. The uh, interesting thing about this is that CCEs have all the actual protocol information. Local cache engines only respond to very simple messages and have limited shadow state knowledge of the entire system. By doing this, we can eliminate all transient states during the protocol, which makes it vastly simpler to verify. So now we'll take a look at the sample BlackBerry SOC. This is kind of the reference with all the bells and whistles that you can make with the BlackBerry SOC. Uh, it turns out we can separate BlackBerry tiles into four distinct categories. Core tiles are the most basic type. A single coherent core of a black current multi-core, along with uncore components needed to communicate with the rest of the system. Streaming accelerator or I.O. tiles do not cache coherent memory. Uh, instead, they stream data to and from the core. Now this could be something like a GPU or a fixed function accelerator, which has a DMA. There's also coherent accelerators, which do uh, you know, fine-grained communication between the core and the accelerator uh, cache coherent memory. And this is useful for cooperative workloads. Uh, this is an interesting part of BlackParrot because you're able to have cores and accelerators very fine grained communication. This, this introduces a whole class of SOCs that people can develop. And last, we can extend the memory of the tile, uh, or of the system rather, using L2 extension tiles. Uh, extending the distributed L2 and providing more directory tags at L2 cache, uh, which allows you to change your memory to compute ratio for a specific application. Now let's zoom into a black card core tile and look at the uncore components that make it really easy to do. So core tiles kind of have everything that you need. Um, and you'll see a lot of these components repeated in all the other tile types. These tiles connect with base jump STL wormhole routers. Uh, this is leveraging an open source library. We don't maintain the code for these routers, uh, so we're able to keep our code base lean and, and narrow. There's also wormhole concentrators, which allow all the components to talk through one router. There's a CCE, which manages directory tags and the coherence information for a uh, slice of memory in the system. So all the cores are able to request data from this one CCE, which serializes all the protocols. There's also BlackCard's deeply integrated L1 caches and distributed L2 cache, which provides fast performance on tile memory. And last is the actual BlackCard core logic. And this is the only custom logic in the tile. Everything else here is reused with other components. Uh, in fact, you know, anyone who has their own risk five software, uh, please come talk to me after this. We'd love to integrate more cores into the BlackCard family. So now that we've looked at the uncore components for a BlackCard tile, we'll look at how to compose other tile types in the taxonomy. L2 extension tiles maintain the coherence directory tags uh, with a standard CCE, but pack it the rest of the area with L2 cache. So you basically just rip out the core, but reuse all the rest of the uh, memory in the, in the tile. Coherent accelerator tiles uh, have a standard LC, but a simpler version of the CCE, which only manages configuration data, scratch bad memory, and uh, local on-tile memory that is not uh, uh, coherent with the rest of the system. Streaming accelerator tiles uh, reuse this manual CCE, uh, but have no need for a coherent LCE. Instead, they communicate over the I.O. network or simply stream results back and forth with the rest of the system. And even among these accelerators, BlackBerry has several different level logics, 
several different levels of integration logic that you can have. Because all of the true coherence state is managed by the CC, as long as you have a CC attached to the Bedrock network, you can have LCEs um, that have different types of components seamlessly integrated without having to uh, write any custom coherence logic. For a stream accelerator, the system only need, or the stream accelerator only needs to generate command and response requests, uh, which could be used over any standard memory protocol. In order to attach a coherent accelerator, the designer can reuse Blackheart's LCEs and data cache, and only have custom accelerator logic for the actual uh, you know, accelerator fixed function logic. If a designer wants more control over the specification, uh, they're able to use completely custom cache and reuse Blackheart's LCE. Uh, just reusing this standard cache service interface that we've defined. And lastly, designers are free to implement full custom accelerators, which obey the simple LCE functionality required by the Bedrock protocol. This option offers the most flexibility, but it has the trade-off of longer development times. We've developed this to be so modular, however, that you can start with your uh, custom accelerator and standard black carrot cores, and then one by one go down the stack and customize to get the best performance, maintaining testability of each step. So now that we've looked at the system architecture, we'll dive a little bit into the black carrot core architecture. Uh, this part of the talk is a little bit, you know, this is the first version of the black carrot core marker, micro architecture. Uh, because we define this as standard interfaces, you can seamlessly switch in and out these different core components without any impact on the system. So the card core itself is a simple in-order pipeline, uh, eight stages with uh, full forwarding, FPU, and, uh, and non-blocking, non-stalling uh, backend. Interestingly, the directory controller is not a standard FSM-based uh, directory controller like you find in most messy-based systems. Uh, we actually have a programmable cache coherence uh, engine which uses a custom risk ISA to uh, add functionality after um, to add functionality. This gives you the flexibility to program different types of coherence traffic, such as security, functionality, and debug information, even after you've taped out into silicon. And all these building blocks, uh, like I've had working on, have these standard latency and sensitive interfaces. And we spend a lot of time making sure these interfaces are able to have a wide range of implementations on either side without impacting the functionality or timing information of other blocks. <coughs> this is key to making sure that Blackbird is a scalable development model and people from all over the world are able to modify different components and able to integrate them together. So now we've talked about Blackbird's design philosophy and system architecture, uh, so we'll talk about how we're building a flock of users and developers around the project. Uh, first we have our modular hardware compliance test suite. And this is driven by the insight that test benches are expensive, but tests are very invaluable. Developers are able to modify small systems of uh, small components of the system and use these standard hardware interface compliance tests to make sure that their uh, interface or their implementation is compliant with the standard interfaces. This testing structure allows Black Parrot to be confidently sensible to robust verification. We're trying to develop Black Parrot as an example of community-driven microarchitecture. Just as Lang says this global stewardship and uh, distributed developer base, we want Black Parrot to be uh, directed by the community rather than controlled by any single entity. The first method is recognizing that ideally Black Parrot's users will become its developers. We want to make it as easy as possible for someone to go from downloading Black Parrot to making their full pull request first pull request. Uh, we don't want people to have to have intimate architectural knowledge of the system to improve uh, you know, their small area of expertise. If you have a TLB expert, you don't want to have him to him or her to understand the branch, you need to understand the branch predictor in order to modify it. Uh, second is building a development infrastructure based on freely available CAD tools. Um, this lowers the barrier of entry so that hobbyists and researchers are able to um, you know, get started up and running the system. And last is focusing on out-of-the-box experience. Users should be able to go from GitHub to simulation or even ASIC in only a matter of a few clicks, uh, without having to debug tool chains or install proprietary software. We've successfully run Black Ferret on Arctic 7 and uh, Genesis 2 FPGAs. We're also uh, diligently working to get Black Ferret into Linux, which is an FPGA uh, open, an open source FPGA based F open source Python-based FPGA design environment, which allows people to have uh, their own FPGA and all their peripherals accessible by Black Parrot, 
but we don't have to maintain it in the code in our central infrastructure. Uh, we're very excited for this because uh, you know, we don't want to maintain FPGA infrastructure, but we would love to get uh, BlackBerry into the hands of all the FPGA users in the world. BlackBerry has also been taped out in advanced 12 nanometer process node, with many more tape outs on the web. This is a process agnostic design which has been validated in several different techniques. And not only is BlackBerry's RTL open source, we also open source the tape out directories uh, that we use for taping out our chips. Uh, this is at github.com slash backcard examples. You can go today and look at our synthesis scripts, um, the uh, cons timing constraints, different memory information, and uh, all our BlackBerry tape outs past and future will be hosted there. We're also hoping that anyone who tapes out BlackBerry outside of our group contributes to that repo so that we can share these uh, you know, insights of how to get a very performant SOC uh, QRI quality of results. Uh, we also participate in the Open Road CAD Flow, which is a uh, free and open source, 24-hour push button CAD Flow, brand new, uh, being developed right now. And this allows for you, using Open, open Road BSG FitBrand 345, to push all the way through an open source CAD Flow today. <laughs> this is a picture of uh, BlackBerry Genesis release date. And we say Genesis release because we view our role as bootstrapping developments in the rather than becoming stewards of the code ourselves permanently. We don't want to throw BlackBerry over the fence every six months, have people you know, fork it and have it to their own needs, and then never contribute back and have this kind of central, agreed upon, standard post work for We want this Linux like development model where everyone works on the same code base and uh, people are able to parameterize it enough to fit their own specific use cases. So I presented BlackBerry, the Linux game for by multi-core. It's silicon validated and ready to be included as a host core for your next accelerator project. If you want to build up the BlackBerry user base, please use and explore, break things, raise issues, pull requests. Um, we're looking for a particular help with porting benchmarks. We need a lot of help on the software side, just, you know, person power. And porting the various FPGAs. Um, different development environments are interesting to us. We'd love to see bugs, or I'm trying to debug us a new Ubuntu 14 point and We're also looking to uh, integrate BlackBerry with any novel accelerator system that you have. Uh, so together, please come talk to me uh, if you're interested in working with us. Uh, we can make BlackBerry the global default choice for RISC-V for us. So, thank you. How many um, contributors have you got outside of the uh, two universities? You have to repeat it because we don't have them. Oh, sure. uh, the question was how many contributors have we had outside of two universities? Uh, so Blackbirds uh, kind of developed collaboratively with Facebook SDL. Uh, we have many outside contributors to base shop STL, and we've had issues that have been raised in BlackBerry that have been fixed there. Um, BlackBerry itself, we're trying to build up this community more so. Any other questions?